So I've experienced some really unusual, interesting things throughout my 26 years of living, and a few of those memories just won't give me peace of mind. Some of my earliest memories go back to the very first apartment I lived in with my parents. We moved quite a bit, which I only recently discovered was when I was only one year old. When I brought those memories up to my mother, she was shocked that I could remember the apartment and the gatherings my parents would hold there with so much detail, saying we moved out of the apartment before I turned two. That apartment is also my first vivid memory of what I've always believed to be a ghost encounter. It was a one-room apartment. There was a small hallway going from the main door to the kitchen, with our bedroom and living room on the left, and the bathroom shower on the right. There was a vent up on the wall that, for whatever reason, always gave me the creeps as a child. My parents and I shared the one room, with me sleeping on a small couch and my parents sleeping on the floor. Everything was covered in carpets. Carpets everywhere. Well, we did live in Ukraine. One night I'm slowly shaken awake by someone, and as I open my eyes expecting to probably see my mom, I noticed the hands of the palest white I'd ever seen in person, with long sharp nails. I look up and looking down on me is an extremely pale woman, long straight black hair, dressed all in black, with a black veil covering her head and most of her face. I don't remember being scared, but I remember her very vividly. She just looked at me for a long minute, then turned and walked away. And from there, the rest of the memory gets foggy. Fast forward to age 16, now living in Israel, my father being a strong Christian wanted to live on the Holy Land. I'm hanging out with two friends when one of them suggests we use a Ouija board to try and summon some spirits to chat. Not knowing any better, I agree. We made our own board with letters, numbers and yes, no on a piece of paper since we didn't have an actual board. And friend A offered to use her ring as the circling piece. Friend B didn't want to join, so she decided to wait outside the room. Both friend A and myself placed a single finger each on the ring, and friend A started calling out different names of famous dead people, hoping someone will respond. After a number of failed attempts, I got a bright idea. I tried calling the ghost I saw as a child. I didn't know her name, but her image was very vivid in my mind, so I figured why not try to concentrate really hard on what she looked like as we were trying to summon her. Maybe it'll work. Lo and behold, the ring started moving. I was skeptic, thinking maybe my friend was trying to pull a prank on me and pulling on the ring. So I paused and managed to convince friend B to join, asking her to help me stop friend A from trying to mess with me. We decided that we both will press down on the ring as hard as we can so that friend A won't be able to move it without proving she's messing with us. That did not go as planned. The more we pressed down on the ring, the faster and more fluidly it moved like it had a life of its own. It answered all our questions, claiming to be the spirit of a dead woman who was brutally killed at the age of 26. Her name would probably be Abella or Abella. We did use Hebrew letters for the board, so I'm not sure how it would be pronounced. It even mentioned a vague section number where she's supposedly buried. I was enorously thrown in jail 10 years ago. I already was in a strange situation with my daughter's father and we were fighting over a custody agreement and I thought for sure this could be used against me to have her taken away. Not to mention it was people I loved and I thought loved me who orchestrated this jail fiasco. So it's fair to say that I was at a low, probably the lowest point in my life. Betrayed by people I loved and the one thing I'm proud of in my life may be taken away. I was out late Saturday, got a hotel room and decided to get my favourite appetizer at a local bar and have a glass of wine to chill my nerves the following Sunday. I couldn't even take one bite. I love to eat and have never ordered something and just not taken a bite. I couldn't even eat a crumb. I decided to get the ball rolling and find a freaking lawyer because I knew I would need one to keep my daughter to prove I was erroneously thrown in jail, the cops lied. For slander, people I loved told lies. There was a myriad of reasons. I was in my car outside the bar, trying to call this lawyer. It was Sunday, so I thought I would just leave a message. It stopped ringing one time. I call back. The voicemail never picks up. But something else does. It's a raspy, deep voice, and it's yelling at me in another language, going on and on. It was not like it was French, Italian, or Spanish, all I slightly know. It seemed archaic. It wasn't human. It hung up on me. 
I also instinctively knew it was something trying to just finish me off, wanting me to think I was crazy hearing voices, wanting me to commit suicide or be committed to a psychiatric ward. I instinctively knew what it was doing. Honestly, I've been suicidal before on this day and the closest I've ever been to feeling that way again, but I did not get scared and spiral down. I dialed it back. I wanted it to yell at me again. I wanted to tell it I was not scared and that he will not win. I wanted to tell it to leave me the F alone. I dialed it back about five times and just got the answering machine, although it seemed jumpy and weak, like he was there. He never came back. In fact, just knowing there was a force out there that wanted me to spiral down again gave me strength. I was able to put one foot in front of the other and go back to the hotel, get a snack, gather myself. I got stronger from there. Turns out the father couldn't do anything about it in court. Everything ended up just fine. It was expunged, although I still do not talk to a family member over this, and I'm happy with my daughter. I also am no longer afraid of anything, which is weird because I used to not be able to watch demon movies at all. I watch them alone now, nothing scares me. You can see how it would have been so easy to spiral down. I think I was so crazy, thrown in a mental institution, for real, have my daughter taken away, being suicidal. But in that instant, I flipped for the better. When it's all said and done, I don't think it was a demon, but an entity just trying to scare me. Perhaps the same one that was trying to bring me down growing up too. If I didn't believe, I would have spiraled down. You really do have to believe in this stuff first, then not be scared of it. This happened a couple of years ago in Manchester, UK. I lived in the north of the city, in a town called Bury, and worked early hour night shifts at the airport. I'll put the real place names on here for anyone that would like to Google the areas in question. Anyway, one early morning in winter, around 2am, I set off for work. Around this time there was intermittent overnight roadworks on the motorway, which would send you off to a junction without warning, diverting you back onto the motorway further down. And this night was one of those taking me off at Worsley and sending down through Worsley, skirting near Eccles towards Manchester's large shopping mall, the Trafford Centre. I knew the area, having lived there a few years previously, but this time of night seemed unusually quiet and deserted on the roads. Normally I'd see the odd person drunkardly staggering down the street, or late night taxis scurrying around, but tonight nobody was on the streets at all. I drove down Barton Road, which to my left is followed by a dark canal, which was mist covered, and slowed my car up to the red light at the intersection just before you cross an old Victoria era swing bridge, Barton Swing Bridge, which crosses the River Mersey below. As I slowed to the lights, I suddenly became overtaken with an intense feeling of dread and panic. The hairs on my arms stood up, and I broke out in a cold sweat for no reason. I had this feeling like a smackhead or someone was going to jump out of a nearby bush and jump my car. Then, as cliche as it sounds, my car radio suddenly cut out, and the only noise was my idling car engine. The lights turned green, and I suddenly didn't want to go through them, over the dark and swing bridge that loomed ahead of me, almost like it dared me to cross it. I swallowed hard and nervously put my car into gear and crept forward to across the junction. The bridge clanked and seemed to groan as I moved hesitantly over it, then followed the curve of the road around a sweeping bend to the left then to the right, with nothing but tall, dark trees leaning over the road on either side. Around the bend on my driver's side, the right in England, is an old monastery, and through the gates of the monastery, I could make out the shape of a dog about to cross the road in front of my car, so I slowed. This dog was huge, it was black, it actually looked muscular from its outline. As I completed the bend, my headlights hit this dog. All I can describe it as, my headlights hit nothing. No reflection off its coat, no details, just like a void, a shadow. This dog turned to me and its eyes glowed yellow. Not reflections like you get off a cat or a fox, they glowed. This beast then ran across in front of me. It clearly wasn't a dog. It ran an emotion that wasn't a dog. As ridiculous as it sounded, it seemed to run in a jerky motion like the really bad CGI motions of old Sinbad film sea monsters. I followed this beast till it ran to the side of the road and out of my headlight beam, and seemed to completely vanish from sight. I looked in my side windows, side mirrors, rear mirrors, 
Nothing. As my car rolled around the next bend in the road past this monastery, the car radio suddenly blurted back into life, startling me. That feeling of dread lifted as this thought randomly came to me. He wasn't meant to see that. He wasn't for you. I felt completely normal, but absolutely perplexed by what had just happened to me. When I was around eight years old, I first met my three friends who moved to the neighborhood, which we have lived in for the past 20 years. The circumstances of them moving to the neighborhood was loosely told to me growing up by them. But as they were kids at the time, they didn't really remember exactly what happened. A couple of months ago, I was at my friend's house and we were talking about paranormal activity we've experienced. That was when my friend's mother sat down and told me in detail what happened in their old home, which made them move to the neighborhood. I knew it was crazy, but I didn't expect to hear what I did. I will try my best to detail all the things she told me. Apologies in advance for the bad spelling and grammar. This all took place in the early 1980s. As a young couple with a baby, they were looking for a council house. Council house is a form of public or social housing built in by local municipalities in the United Kingdom, around the Nottingham area. They came across a neighborhood which they wanted to live in and looked around the properties there. They were then informed of a house in that area which had become available. When they went to visit the house, they noticed that the door to the basement had been bricked up. The other houses in that area all had access to their basements. They thought it was odd, but nevertheless, nothing concerning. From what I was told, the first couple of years which they lived in the house, nothing happened. It was just a normal house. The father was still studying electrical engineering, and the mother was a housewife. By this time, they had two more children. Later on, one of their neighbours who frequently visited the house told the mother that she sensed a bad spirit in the house and they should get the house blessed. They didn't do so when they first moved in. My friend's mother agreed, but told me she regretted it deeply as all hell broke loose after that. She thought the events that transpired were caused by the blessing. The first thing which started to happen was my friend who was the oldest at the time started to become restless at night and complain that something was scaring him. My friend's mom thought it was just normal as he just moved into his own room for the first time. But this started to become a daily occurrence and she started to worry about him. It became that bad that he refused to sleep by himself. He said he saw a black woman with long fingers and frizzly hair in his room. Eventually, all three brothers would sleep in the same room. Later, they started to hear scratching and knocking noises in the house. The way she described the noises was like ticking on the windows and scratching noises in the corner of the rooms. This would last for minutes. She couldn't understand where exactly the noises were coming from. As the months went along, things became increasingly strange. She told me how they started to smell rotten fish throughout the house, and then it would just suddenly disappear. My friends, who were the oldest and youngest, were the ones who were greatly affected by the events in the house. The middle child had become attached to the spirit. He would frequently play by himself and talk to the spirits when his brothers weren't around. Later on, the father started to become a target. My friend's mom told me there was an instance where he punished the three boys and especially the middle child for doing something wrong. Later that night, he had a dream of getting chased by a demon dog, which ended up biting him. He woke up the next day with a giant bite mark on his chest. One of the most frightening things which she told me was that at night, she felt that something was standing near the windowsill, and then it would jump on the bed, and then jump back on the windowsill. She would get up and start to pray as the bed was shaking, and it would eventually stop. They would also start to hear sinister laughing throughout the house, as if something demonic was taunting them. There were also instances where she saw paw paw prints on the kitchen floor as if a dog had been walking around. The only problem was that they didn't have a dog. They asked one of their uncles to house it for them as they took the three kids for a day out. They wanted to get their minds off the events and have a normal day for a change. The uncle was told of what was happening in the house, but he was a skeptic. He said he would deal with what was in the house himself while they were gone. Later that night, when they arrived home, they were shocked to discover the front door wide open and all the lights in the house on. They phoned the uncle and asked him where he was. He told them that he challenged the spirit in the house and was thrown across the room. He started to hear laughing, at which point he ran out the door. 
As you can imagine, things became very desperate, so they contacted the local council and informed them of what was happening in the house. Eventually, a woman from the council came to visit their home to reassure them that they would do something to make it better. My friend's mother later learned that the woman who came to visit ended up in hospital with a mysterious illness and later refused to go anywhere near the house again. The meetings, which they had subsequently all took place in a pub, which was half a mile down the road. Thankfully, the council found them another house, on the street where we live now. On the last day, when they were packing their things into the car to move out, the middle son was walking in the house by himself, without a care for anything. He was the only one who didn't want to move. The family later discovered that numerous couples had left the house after their departure. No one stayed in the house for more than a few months. After doing some research, they were informed by local people that a black woman with a dog had committed suicide in that house. From what I understand, the house is now a part of a Chinese takeaway. So I came home on lunch break yesterday and the candle on my living room coffee table was lit. I, I know I didn't light it and I walked by it on my way out of the house in the morning like I do every morning to go to work. When I saw it I went over, said thank you to the candle and blew it out. It kind of freaked me out a little and I was concerned someone was messing with me so I checked all the locks in the house and made sure nothing was missing. Nothing was out of place and I called all the people that had spares to make sure none of them had been in my house and lit the candle. So I'm sure people are going to ask, and before I even say this, no, I didn't forget to blow it out. The reason being is that I have this weird thing where when I blow candles out, I always say thank you out loud. I don't know why I really do it. It's just something I started doing when I blew out candles while living alone. But anyway, I distinctly remember blowing out the candle the night before. And I remember it was particularly hard to light in general because it's in a deep jar. It's in one of those prayers candles you find at the grocery store. So I used a spare birthday candle I had left over to stick down in the jar and light it. While it was lit, I was painting at my kitchen table. And at some point I got up, said thank you, blew the candle out and resumed watching Twitch and painting. I checked online to see if candles could relight themselves. And people said they could given the right circumstances. However, I'm sure it was going out before going to bed. Furthermore, my neighbor has a security system with a camera that points at my driveway. And during the hours when the candle had to be lit, no one had come or gone. This happened two weeks ago and I can't stop thinking about it. I was sleeping then I opened my eyes because the noise was bothering me. The noise was something was running in my room. I was still sleepy. I didn't realize it yet. I thought I had sleep paralysis, but nah. Then it got louder and the running became faster. I was like, what the fuck? I don't have any pets. My house is clean. There ain't no rats or nothing. It was too dark. I couldn't see anything. I swear I got so damn scared. I started saying some prayers and then suddenly the noise stopped. Then I felt the super cold air. It was so weird, I felt like there was a wind going counterclockwise motion. I can't explain it. Anyway, it was in front of my face. At this moment, I knew it was something scary, something supernatural. So I closed my eyes so damn hard, I was terrified I didn't want to look. Then, this thing whistled at me. It was like a tune whistle, not just any normal whistle. I quickly grabbed my phone and switched on the light from the smart app. When I checked the time, it was four in the morning. I did encounter strange things in the past, but it wasn't something like this. Like once, I was sleeping and a kid woke me up by tapping my shoulder. I still remember what he was wearing. He was wearing striped t-shirts and knee-length blue jeans. Right now, I can't get the whistle tune out of my head. I don't intentionally whistle it out loud sometimes. This happened in 2001, when I was 13. The foster family I had just moved into was selling one of two old people's homes they owed. This particular one just so happened to be supposedly placed on the boundary lines of the old Templar kingdom of Walsingham. Not my words, but foster mothers. As it was located in a rough area of Leeds, Yorkshire, 
After all residents were moved to different care homes, staff laid off, before the sale completed and money changed hands. My then foster mother, her ex care home manager, friend, and myself decided to spend the night to make sure all cleaning done, all items, knickknacks removed by removals, no damage to property, etc. The initial plan was I was to sleep in a camp bed in the living room, foster mother and her friend to sleep in a nearby ground floor room. Upon pulling into the driveway, I can only explain I got bad vibes, spidey sense, neck hairs tingling, off the place. Mid-October, early evening darkness. Anyway, I got out of the car and upon walking up to the front door, I can only explain it as seeing a black cloud or amalgamation of moving darkness through the living room window, correlating in the left-hand corner of the room. This furthering my bad vibes, I stuck close to Foster Mother and her friend as we ordered the basic chores before bed. As the room they were sleeping in had twin beds and was quite big, I asked if I could sleep on the floor so as not to be on my own. Surprisingly, they agreed. TV on until time for sleep. Foster mother and her friend were fast asleep. I was drifting into sleep between half sleep, but not what time when I was on my left side, right ear on the pillow, left ear up. I heard as though it was directly in my left ear a few seconds of loud sniffing, and I could feel the breath on my ear. As I opened my eyes, slowly, it was then I heard the most loud, inhuman, blood-curdling scream of a woman. I imagined woman as it was too high-pitched for a man. Then silence. My eyes opened, I jolted up, terrified, what was 30 seconds looking at both foster mother and her friends sound asleep. It seemed like an eternity, I screamed, what the fuck? My foster mother and her friend woke up to me in tears, explaining the scream as they did best to console me, and said go back to bed, we'll talk in the morning. I couldn't go back to sleep, all I could do was try and rationalise, yet I could hear a fake clang 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 coming from beneath the floorboards, almost like mining. To be fair, the next morning during last minute chores and waiting for removals, they listened intently, tried to rationalise it and make light of the ordeal while consoling me. Eventually they tried to make a joke of it as they knew by how I looked I was telling the truth, which worked after a few days. After we left the next day after papers were signed, I was told apparently other staff had heard the same thing over the 20 years that had been a care home. I found out a rich family bought the place to be used as family home, and I remember two weeks after this ordeal, calming down I asked if the new owners were told it was haunted. I got a grin and maybe. I have lived in this house with my husband and two teenage sons for two years now. Every one of us has heard the same thing, time after time. When sitting in the living room at night, you can hear what sounds like someone pacing back and forth on the front porch. Sometimes there will be light knocking on the door in the walls. When we check, no one is there. No wild animals, nothing that could explain the noise at all. We have kind of made a joke out of it. Oh, the ghost is back, haha. <laughs> None of us are really true paranormal believers, although I am open to the possibility. Just skeptical, I want to explore all options before jumping to conclusions. Well, my mother has been staying with us for the past week and has been sleeping on a pull-out bed in the living room. She tells me that it goes on all night long and can actually get pretty intense. We are all always in our bedrooms at night, on the opposite side of the house, so we had never really experienced what she said. About an hour ago, my mother and I are watching a movie in the living room, about 10pm where I live. My husband had gone out and the kids were playing Smash Bros in the back room. We had heard the pacing a few times and talked about it a little earlier. There was a few minutes of quiet and then three heavy distinct knocks on the front door that sounded just like my husband had come back and had his hands full of groceries. So I reach over and open the door, still looking at the TV screen, and say, you're back, come on in. Only no one comes in. We stop the movie and I look around outside. Nothing. My husband isn't back yet. Nothing else is around. My mum tells me again that this happens every night. I've never heard it so distinct, but she tells me it's happening every night. She then says, sort of jokingly, I think there was someone out there that wanted in, and I think you just gave him an invitation. At this very moment, as soon as that proclamation left her lips, the light bulb flickered about five seconds and then blew out completely, leaving us sitting there in the dark. We both panicked for a few seconds and then kind of tried to laugh it off. 
We restart the movie we were watching and for the rest of the movie, we heard no creeping around outside. I don't want to admit it, but I am feeling scared right now. I went to the bathroom and one of the bulbs in there had done the same flicker, but it didn't burst like the other. This isn't something that has happened before. It's not a wiring problem, at least not one that existed before the incident. This takes place about two years ago in August, in my home, during a bright summer day. So my sister came over to see me and my baby son one afternoon. My son went for a nap, and as we were both a bit drowsy, we also went for naps in separate beds on two different floors. Now a bit about my house. It's old. So old we weren't entirely sure how, because if we look too deeply we might get into one of those naughty blue plaques. My house isn't haunted. It's got residual loving and warm energy, but that's it. Our wooden stairs, we've got two sets as my house is set over three floors. I joke that these stairs are demon stairs because they are beyond creaky. You cannot sneak, no matter how hard you try. Believe me, with a new baby, I've tried. So my sister slept in my bed and I in the spare bed, on different floors. We are only sleeping for an hour. Partway through the nap, I woke to hear someone on the stairs. I assumed it was my sister leaving to go to work, but chose to go back to sleep. Once I woke up, I checked on my sister, only to find her still in bed. I asked if she had gone downstairs. She said she hadn't moved, but heard the stairs and thought it was me. So now both of us heard the stairs. I figured maybe it was my father-in-law who pops in sometimes. Check in with him. Nope, he was working all day. Checked with other family members who lived nearby. Everyone was out. It's not settling sounds and it has never done it before or since. So who was on the stairs? Rather sadly, this coincided with the death of my aunt, my sister and I loved. She'd only visited the house a couple of times, but part of me wonders if it was her. This happened when I was nine years old. All at that age, I never really believed in paranormal stuff, even though my mom had told me stories of paranormal stuff she'd experienced. But since I hadn't experienced any of that yet, I never took her stories too seriously. Anyways, I remember I was waiting for my mom to pick me up from school, and I was sitting next to this girl from my class. And she told me that there was a ghost in our classroom, and the ghost would sit in desks and run around. Obviously, I didn't really take it too seriously, but I told her I would check it out. The next day, again after school, they would make us sit in the hallways for kids who were getting picked up. And I remember my teacher leaving the classroom, with his things and locking up in the classroom. I decided since no one was there anymore, it would be the perfect opportunity to see if there really was a ghost. The classroom door had a small window, and walking up to it, I wasn't expecting anything, until I looked through the window. I saw a girl, probably about my age, sitting at a desk and was wearing a dress. It was red, white and black. She had very long hair and very pale skin, almost transparent, but she seemed like she was glowing. I remember being incredibly confused rather than scared, so I went to the water fountain to drink some water. Then I walked back and looked again, and she was still there. I was still confused, and then her head was slowly turning towards me. I could see her face I walked away. I wasn't ever scared until now. I'm still in disbelief that it happened. I told my parents and my dad didn't really believe it. Years later, I tried to do research but couldn't find anything on the girl. I still remain confused to this day. I'm a 20 year old female. The first time I remember seeing someone who wasn't there, I was 6 years old. After these instances kept happening, my grandparents eventually fessed up and said she's been doing this since she was little. They told my parents how I'd see people on the boardwalk and asked to walk with them, or play with people in the ocean that weren't there. As I got older, they became constants and I was able to tell who was real and what wasn't. My dad died when I was 12, but up until the day he died, I made him sleep back to back with me until I fell asleep, and also walked behind me up the stairs because I always had this feeling on my back like someone was with me. Eventually, when I was around 9, I went to therapy for unresolved trauma happened at around four years old. 
My dad was all for therapy, but he made it very clear that I wasn't allowed to tell the therapist what I was seeing or feeling because they'd take me away. Fast forward to me being 14 and hospitalized with anorexia. The psychiatrist that was treating me knew something was up and my mom went against my deceased father's wishes and told the doctor what I've been going through. I was put on Suprexa, which I was on for six years at high doses, but the visions and the presence never really went away. I just finished withdrawal from Zabraxa. My therapist, psychiatrist, doctors and my mom say it's just access to the spirit world that I'll always have. I've been screened for schizophrenia, psychosis, schizoid, all of it. They can't find anything but depression, anxiety, PTSD and anorexia. Nothing that explains what I experience.